What's up, you guys? Bella Rose here, welcoming you to my podcast, Pastor Mrs. Now, as you may or may not know, there are a number of, um, well, female ministers who are ministers in their own right, and some others are actually married to pastors, and there are some misconceptions and myths that need to be busted. Is there anything like busted? Anyway, you get the drift. <laughs> About some of these people, and today on my podcast, I'll be sharing one of such people with you. Now, my guest today is someone who is, in her own right, a female minister. But she's also married to one of the most sought-after pastors of our generation. Let me tell you something. He's anointed. He is in a lot of really, really awesome circles. And God is using him mightily in our generation and even at this time. Now, of course, as you know, for someone who is that anointed and that sought-after, there must be some... Um, there must be a high expectation from his spouse. And these are the kinds of conversations that we need to have. And, of course, just listening to how this person is able to manage the home front and also have her own ministry because she also is busy for the world. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome two pastor Mrs. <laughs> Nifemi Olawande. It's so good to have you on the podcast. How are you? Like for real, for real. Yes, I am. <laughs> so your husband is called P. Dan and you are called P. Mo. How? Your name is Nifemi. <laughs> so, like, where did the end come from? It's Pastor Mrs. Oh! <laughs> nice! Exciting. So, tell me about what it means to be a pastor's wife. Just, you know, when you wake up in the morning, when it's Sunday morning, for instance, and you're going to church, you're going to where you pastor Mrs. Hart, right? And so, what, what, is, what is that life like? Okay. I think I'm a person that is so into purpose, so I don't get driven by titles Ooh. or by offices. So being a pastor's wife doesn't necessarily change my personality or the way I am from Monday to Saturday. It doesn't, it doesn't change it. Although I understand that the office of a pastor's wife is also a high calling, just like being a pastor is a high calling. So the roles and responsibilities, the people that are watching, the way you speak, the way you act, and all of that. But what just makes it easy for me is being myself at every time and everywhere I am. So being a pastor's wife just means I am a help to the pastor, the, the man of God. That is my first purpose. Even as a woman, when, when God made the man, then he made the woman and said, hey, you're supposed to help him. So I understand that the pastor is the pastor, and I'm here to help him. Mm. So being a pastor like right, means I am the helper. Or the pastor. I'm Simply an assistant who is great. <laughs> hey. <call> our <laughs> so you, you mentioned that it's easy for you because you are yourself Monday to Saturday and Sunday. You're the yes. same person. Um, is it stressful? So it is easy maybe because of your personality. Like, like that's who you are. It's your lifestyle. Mm. Christianity and you know being a child of God is an everyday thing for and you. But going to a pastor. So there you I've go. Had that. <laughs> pastor in life. That's pastor interesting. Life. But is it is it stressful with the work? You know, on a personal level, it is easy. But when it comes to the work front, is it easy? I can say it is easy. Mm. I can say it is easy. But my hand of scripture has always been faithful. Is he that called me, mm. and he will do it. Mm. And I hold on to it so much. So when I get to a point where I feel overwhelmed, I can say, hey, you sent me here. Mm. <laughs> so you have to fix it. The, there are times when I want to stay away from the whole drama mm. and people. When you say drama, how it, it, you It's mean? more of people. Mm. Like, so there are times I really do not want to be around so many people. And that is me, that is my personal. Your husband is like so extroverted. Loves he loves it. <laughs> and I, I'm getting to love it as well because especially when you're with the right people, it's 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 beauty, it yeah. it's fun, you grow together, you learn together. But there are actually times I do not want to have to smile even when I'm not feeling so good and not bad. You have to, but then I have to. So it's a lot of responsibility, but still people you get that come to So have you always wanted to be a pastor? Mm -hmm. I mean as it you you've never uh, uh, <laughs> I think, <laughs> okay, so like I said before, my parents are pastors, and 
I know my mom to be a pastor. Yeah. And so there's this responsibility that comes upon you as a pastor's wife, and even as pastor's children. Mm. So there's a way you're expected to live your life. There's a space. You're expected to be open. You're mm. expected to receive people. Whether you want to or not. My mom would tell me, I'm just, sometimes if she's around, we're all just coming back from an outing, and my husband is coming in with guests. And she expects me that your husband's are coming in with guests. Even though your husband's food is there, you still go to the kitchen and Make cook food for the people. For the crowd the entourage. is coming in. And I'm like, okay, seriously? <laughs> but then I, I, I'm learning it day by day because it's just a responsibility that has been placed on your shoulders to be a help mm. to the people. As the man, as the husband that is a shepherd to them, mm-hmm. and then you will be a help. Should be that person that they can come to and talk to every time. So I never really wanted to take up all of that. So I I didn't want to be a pastor, but I felt it so many times. When you were young. When I was so I mean, how did that how did it happen? Were you um what was P Dan already a pastor before you met him or yes. not? Yes, he was. So what now attracted you? After all, I don't want to marry a pastor. <laughs> so, so like I said at the beginning, purpose is very key to me. Mm-hmm. So it, it to me it was just been it was purpose being magnified. Mm. So it's not like I'm stepping into the pastor's wife's shoes that it has always been. I'm stepping into purpose. Mm. So for me it was purpose happening to me. So it wasn't like because he's a pastor. Or why why am I not in the past? Although I had school, like what's going on, <laughs> what is the deal, was this the plan? Mm-hmm. And then he took me to all the things he had said about my husband, like when you look at all of this, you don't you know that he's going to be a pastor. Yeah, you had like a list. I had like a list, I had like qualifications, you know, okay, so when your husband comes, this is what he's going to this is what he's going to be doing. So all those things were were already pointed out or I didn't take them because I didn't yeah. want to. So so that was how it was for me it was purpose. Wow. Now you have married for how long? Four years. Um, do you have your own personal ministry apart from being a help to your husband? I wouldn't say word personal. Okay. Because everything we do, we do them together. Even the prophetic woman that we have was founded by him. So he just handed it over to me when we're getting married and said, okay, so they're whole women and I can't be technically leading women, so you just continue the mm-hmm. work. So he's still like the founder. I'm like the managing director. <laughs> so even though he, he allows me to make decisions, mm-hmm. I do everything, God instructs me for mm-hmm. the people and all of that. So it is not like a personal ministry. Ministry to us is from when we got married, before we got married, mm-hmm. God instructed us. So ministry to us is single, mm-hmm. is, is an assignment together. Mm-hmm. So it's not, okay, so my husband is a pastor, I'm, I'm not a pastor. Um, no, he, God gave us the assignment together when we're getting married. So there's nothing he's doing that he doesn't want me to be involved right. in. And there's nothing I'm doing that he is not involved in. So mm-hmm. we had our, our first fiscal vigil in March after a long while, yeah. and he was like the main speaker of the meeting. So it's, That's it's a pretty cool man. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool man. So it, it is like that for us. So there's no personal ministry. Mm-hmm. It's still together. So did you but did you become more involved in his ministry because he was a pastor? I mean, so if he perhaps were not a pastor's child, for instance, and if he, if he maybe did not... Um, I don't know if it's I'm right, but it not being insist in, in, a, in a way. Would you have also been a part of the mission? I mean, like, okay, yes, okay, bring on a prophetic woman. I'm ready to hold, you know, um, handle it, etc. Would it have been a thing for you? Um, the prophetic woman, as it came in, for me was, at the beginning, it was me taking up a responsibility that was not um, my initiative. Mm. But it didn't stop the fact that I already had an assignment for women. Before I got married, I had organized two meetings for women. So okay. it was me still stepping into purpose. Mm-hmm. It was me still coming into what God had been for me. Mm-hmm. That is why purpose, I, it's not a purpose meeting, but it's then fine. It, is, it is like super Elaborate. important. <laughs> it is super important. If you want to step into the pastor's wife's shoes because your husband is in ministry and you've not yet identified your own purpose, mm. your own office, you're going to struggle. When, when, if I should try to flex into what other pastors' wives do, just because I'm a pastor's wife, I will really be in struggle. Mm-hmm. But I am stepping into what God has prepared me for, 
and they mix it more easily. Mm -hmm. when, when God gave um, the, 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 the five officers in the scriptures, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, mm -hmm. you need to identify the whole. You might not be called to be a pastor. Mm. If a pastor is supposed to tend the sheep and take you might not because yours might be in the ministry, right. in government. So you, you step into church, even though you're the pastor's wife, or you know that your assignment is with the children. You do mm. not you do not press so much to sit as the person. You go to I don't know you, 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 <laughs> Yes. So many people are strong. Mm. And you see somebody else with that office in church, and you try to silence the person mm. because you feel I should be the one doing it. Do, you do not, don't try to wear garments that you don't want. You are mm. strong mm. with it. You know? It wouldn't even fit. Mm. It wouldn't fit. So the best thing is identifying what is my office in this kingdom. Mm -hmm. What is my hand for my husband? What am I supposed to do? It makes it all easy. It makes it all easy. My husband is the one that teach that I practically taught me how to preach. Wow. That, that enforces me. It will like you're going to take this. My study, and I'm like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared for it. And he said, no, what? You just get that you will learn how to. Mm. And then, so gradually, gradually, I started to learn. That encouragement is important. It is important. It's important that a pastor also helps his wife, trains his wife, and he's not just growing and alone leaving, and leaving the wife behind. Or else, the wife just feels like a shadow that is just there for for, for a show of a wife. Speaking of, so your husband is very extroverted. Like we can all agree, <laughs> we know that is the life of the party. Is um, super friendly, etc. You are a bit more on the reserved side. Um, do you ever feel the need to overcompensate sometimes when you guys go out, for example, being you know that? Do you sometimes feel the need to? Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Does that ever happen? It's like I need to be friendly. I need to be nice. I need to try to okay. be a bit more extroverted than I normally am. Thank you for that question. Because when we got married. I used to feel so, uh, I don't want to use the word deserted. Mm. So we would go out on, uh, an, for an event mm -hmm. and we're sitting for five minutes and my husband is home and he's meeting everybody. He knows everybody. <laughs> and if he doesn't know you, he'll get to know you that day. And I'm here trying to press my phone and look for somebody to like chat with. Chat with <laughs> like, <laughs> can, can, can this guy just come back to his shit? But then he started to teach me about networking. He started to teach me about people. Then he would deliberately come and pick me up and say, come and impress with this. Oh. Come and impress with this. Come and impress with this. It, 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 it makes it, my husband makes it easier. Mm. And so I, I do not necessarily have to jump out of my skin and try to be somebody else still. Even though I'm not that extroverted, mm. I still learn to relate with people. Right. I am doing better than like, we started. Mm. I can say that. <laughs> I'm better than we started. Mm. I learned to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I met you, for example. I'm sure it was my yes, husband. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I learned to talk to people. Sometimes they tell me, you talk to her. Mm -hmm. So it's... And I'm not doing it out of duty. I'm doing it out... Mm. I'm doing it because it's a positive attitude. Mm. So you get to meet people. You... you, you they will talk to you, they will tell you this is what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And then you can encourage them, you can counsel them, because it's part of your office. It's actually part of my office. God specifically told me that you have the tongue of the learning to speak a word in season to him that is with you. So if I am staying away from them, they will not talk to me. True. So I have to learn it, not have a duty, but mm -hmm. still in purpose. Wow. That's deep. That really is deep. Now, your husband is, again, and, and, and yeah, I, I will be making a lot of references to him. He is more out there. He's more prominent in ministry. Now you already have your you have your own ministry. You are making impact. You know, I know that you're making impact. Do you ever feel sort of intimidated by your husband's success as a minister? Where it's like people know him more than they know you, and um, maybe he may be getting a lot more recognition than you. Do you feel intimidated by ministry? Mm, it, it has never happened, mm. and it will never happen because my husband. You will not listen to my husband's message so many times without him mentioning by me. So it is, it is we're together. He would always, That's he loves to talk about his wife. So he goes there on those high places and then he's talking about his wife. And there was this very interesting one. I mean, he was ministering in one of uh, the big churches. I think it was Wafbeck. Um, was it? Wafbeck, he told me to come 
he told me, Rafik, he actually told me to come out and give him something. He planned it like that. Like, he was going to say, baby, come. <laughs> and all of that. But it was, it was House of David. Okay. And then I sent a text. I was watching. Yes, I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> I was watching and I, and I sent a text. And he decided to announce. It. Right there. Right there. My I wife just it. sent me a text. So, you, you're, you're doing good, baby, or something like that. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I did. And he, he loves it when I. I give him feedback. Oh. He loves it when I watch his meetings mm-hmm. and I tell him, okay, so you sent us. So this is what you said. He wants me to like tell him, you're doing wrong. You're, mm-hmm. you, know, you should have said this. He loves that. So when he goes anywhere, I am excited. I am praying for him. Mm-hmm. And he will come back and, and make the coming back feel like you were the one that made it also. Mm. So if, if we go to an event together, to a, a program together, not an event, program he would acknowledge his wife he would he says he even preaches better whenever he's like wow. he's around i am not intimidated in fact i am praying for him to continue to talk to mm-hmm. if to me i would rather have few followers on instagram <laughs> but then when i keep because they are few people to do when, when, yes when, i have messages and i can't even respond to them and when i see the numbers on instagram i'm like Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you are the first person I'm meeting who is not excited about more Instagram followers. No, no I am not what? excited about it. Because to me, it's it's more work. True. Because I feel like more people want to hear from you what God is saying. So he actually puts me on my toes. I'm mm-hmm. like, God, I need to feed sure. your yeah. ship. Mm-hmm. I need to feed your ship. I need to deliver. I need to help them. Some people are saying they want this. They, 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 have, they need advice. They mm-hmm. need counsel. Mm-hmm. I need to be able to say the right things at the right time. Yeah. So I'm not so excited, but still I know that there is work. Yeah. And God is just saying, I see that you're responsible. Mm-hmm. I see that you can do it. How do you deal with female female followers, right? Or just like female sheep is you know, just around your husband. I know where you're going. Yeah, how do you how do you because I I've heard some pastors' wives say stuff like that is why they are in ministry because they don't want to leave their husbands alone to deal with female members of the church, etc. Okay. But like, well, so they as far as they are concerned, that's how they are helping me. Like I'm here any man any woman that has issues, don't go to my husband, come to me. So I, that's in their opinion the way of dealing way. with. Is it? I mean, well, you talk about purpose. I think purpose is more important. It's but anyway, important. <laughs> so how do you deal with that's that? That's a good way to deal with it. But for me, um, let me talk about when we really got married mm-hmm. because my husband is a people person. Right. He can he call you <laughs> and then like, you're talking and talking. But then when we really got married, I was still trying to be a good, calm wife. Like, it's fine, you can talk to them. But later I started to tell him, you need to actually reduce <laughs> the way you talk to these people for so long. Mm-hmm. Not because of me, but because of you actually. Mm-hmm. And no, you cannot totally trust the people. Mm-hmm. Sure. So once in a while we get to talk about it. And sometimes I I relax. One, I trust God in my husband mm-hmm. that is open to Change is not going to fall. I pray for him, which is more important than he's not going to fall. I pray that my husband loves me. Regular declaration, my husband loves me continually. So I pray it and I trust that it's not going to fall. But then I do not I do not feel any jealousy in hold or pressure because they are around him. Or insecurity. Or insecure, that's the word. I do not feel insecure. They are around him because they see that he, he, he loves people, they see that they can help him. If I realize that anybody is acting or, or getting too close, I can counsel him. And even if I will be like, ah, this get come and tell me this is this getting too close to mm-hmm. me, can you like take over and continue? Yeah, because I think sometimes her. sometimes men can tell. Yes, they yeah. do. So you just say this lady, I don't want to be the one to counsel her, you mm-hmm. counsel her mm-hmm. and all of that. So there's there's a lot of balance as well with helping us. I don't like asking this question, but I think it's important to um, how do you deal with the home front? Because people of people like, you know, female ministers of pastors' wives, that that for them is like how they how they support their husbands. Like for when he has traveled and he's doing the Lord's work, you are at home with the children. But I think there's a lot more to female ministers. But then you've talked about some of the stuff that you're doing to do with God. Um, so how do you deal with the home front? Like with my children, like raising my children, yeah. we we raise them together, although it's obvious that I, I spend more, more time, time with, them. with them. But still, for us, family is also is also um, pivotal. 
to ministry mm. because when God was speaking to Timothy, when Pastor Paul was speaking to Timothy, he was saying, if you desire the office of a bishop, you will have home rights, your home must be secure, yeah. and all of that. So he's super intentional about it. We, we have um, our goals, we have our plans for the nice. children. I try to make confession for the children. We, we try to balance things, and sometimes we want to follow that. Let us all follow that. Let's all go. Let's see how daddy does it. Mm-hmm. This evening, my daughter was was imitating my husband's tongues and she's two years wow. and she was hearing it so I she was, she was repeating the same thing and sometimes in the night she'll wake me mommy I want to see daddy so we'll play daddy on YouTube and we want to watch daddy wow. on YouTube so God helps us we were still a family we tried to spend time together we tried to to raise the children together whenever it's around we're taking the children to school together Brilliant. so they can have that time with daddy mm-hmm. and bond with daddy so it won't be like it's only mommy that is there yeah. daddy is there as well sometimes I'll send him daddy daddy you study <laughs> school and we to study the scriptures together and all of that Brilliant. So it's, God is helping us what would you say is the most exciting thing about being a pastor as well? Hmm. The most exciting thing about being a pastor's wife, and I wouldn't have said this before I got married, would be the people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because obviously I don't want people around. Yeah. But, but now they are the ones who make it. That's, that's, that's um, something called um, the, the ministry of men. So when God gives you good men, you see good people, and then you have somebody to talk with. I need to get this done. I need to help you. And it's ah, you are one of them. Okay, wow. it's it's exciting mm-hmm. that you can, you you need to do something, and you can set up people. Hey, my sister is getting married. I need to get this up. You mm-hmm. need to help me arrange things. Mm-hmm. They will come. And they will come. They are wow. willing to come. They, they are willing to go to do anything for their pastor and their pastor boy. They are willing to do anything. So that is that is the most exciting thing. And another thing also to people is that when they come to you for advice and then you need to counsel them and then you see the transformation in their lives. It's mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah. Like excuse me for yeah. I I'm staying in intercession for somebody and I see the hands I see the miracles. I am excited about mm-hmm. it. So it is still the I want this conversation to continue. I do. I definitely would have a part two. Um, but I'm so thankful to you for agreeing to be on this podcast. I'm glad. I'm glad. Just a word of advice to anyone out there who's watching, a pastor's wife, a potential pastor's wife, a human minister who's unmarried, etc. What would you advise with them? Okay, so I would say that um, being a pastor's wife is a high calling. Being a pastor is a high calling. And being a pastor's wife is a high calling. Do not think little of yourself. And do not think that God is just trying to force something on you. God will, God that has called you faithfully is He, and He will do it. He will strengthen you. He will give you the wisdom. He will give you the understanding. He will give you the, the strength to do what He wants you to do. And you will just realize it was easy all along. I pray that this will be this a call for you. If you're still hiding from being a pastor, why? It's a call to you, and it will be. It will be an amazing experience for you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pastor Mrs. Oluwani Femi Olawande, and this is the Pastor Mrs. Broadcast.